Hi there, Susan Deshaines, and we're going to be talking about um, injury prevention today. So the two main joints we're going to be talking about is the shoulder joint and also the hip or low back pain. So with shoulder injuries, over 50% of people over the age of 65 have shoulder injuries. Um, and then before the age of 25, 20 to 40% of Americans suffer from some sort of shoulder issue. 85% of Americans have experienced some sort of low back pain. So those are, those are definitely two major uh, pain-related um, areas that we're gonna be focusing on, especially towards the end. So how can we decrease injury? Well, one of them is to gain mobility in a joint. So you could take just like a broom or this is just a dowel, and this would be range of motion or mobility of that area. So I'm just trying to get that shoulder to move in different areas. You can do different things like halos. Okay, so this is a little bit, <clears throat> excuse me, different than like a static stretch. Whereas if I was gonna stretch out my chest, you know, I would be holding a stretch, you know, anywhere from 10 to 30 seconds. Um, a minute, of course, is better. Uh, ACSM recommends that we're stretching all major muscles two to three times a week. Of course, if you could do it every day, that would be, that'd be wonderful. So if your muscles get really tight, so let's say I'm sitting at a computer all day long and my pecs get really tight, it's going to put the shoulder joint in a compromised position, okay? The shoulder joint wants to be in a line with the ear. So it'd be the ear, the shoulder, the hip, the knee, and the ankle. That would be good body alignment, okay? But if I'm sitting at a desk and I have bad ergonomics, and maybe I'm either jetting my head forward or I'm rounding my back, maybe I'm looking up, down, you know, however it is, that's gonna, you know, that's gonna take a toll on the body and especially on those joints. If you ever looked at a shoulder joint, there's not a lot holding that ball and socket together. It's a pretty free flowing joint. So there's tons of injuries that are related to the, to the shoulder. So if I can decrease the stress that's being put on the joint, by keeping my muscles um, flexible and making sure that I'm balanced out both the front and the back of my body, that's definitely going to decrease the wear and tear on, on joints. So we were talking about body alignment, right? Um, think about what you do all day long. So if you're a mom or a dad and you're you know, picking up your toddler and you're constantly putting them on your hip and you're multitasking by you know, talking to people or cooking dinner, um, whatever weight you have on this side, the other side is trying to balance you out a little bit, okay? Or if you have a book bag and you constantly have it over only one side of the body, you know that other side is trying to balance it out. So these are all overuse injuries that over a period of time can whack out your body alignment. Um, when you go to the grocery store, we used to see all of the checkers facing one direction and they'd all be checking like this. And inevitably, they'd be having like some sort of carpal tunnel or a brace on. Now you see them facing different directions. So that's one step closer of trying to decrease them always doing the same direction or that repetitive motion. Um, maybe you have a wallet and your wallet's, you know, pretty thick because you got so much cash in it, right? But you sit on that wallet all day long, okay? Is that going to alter how your pelvis is? Yes, so there's these little things throughout the day, just kind of keep note of it. Um, when I have a client and I'm, I'm just checking out their body alignment, I like to look at their hands. So if you have a second, look at yourself in the mirror. And then what I want you to look at is, can you see all your fingers? If you can see all of your fingers, okay, you're probably pretty rounded in the chest. So your chest is probably pretty tight right? Um, is one shoulder higher than the other? So these are all, all these different pieces to the puzzle for, for injury prevention. So what can you do today to decrease your chances um, for injury? Number one, be aware of some things that maybe you do repetitively all day long. Can you switch? So I use like the um, picking up the children, you know, on one side. Well, if you got to pick that kid up, maybe you put them onto the other side. If you have a backpack instead of, or a work bag, a laptop, instead of always putting it on one shoulder, put it on both shoulders or alternate what side you put that on, okay? Um, 
And then we're also going to talk about your workstation, which is really important. So you can always go to YouTube, um, type in Susan Deshane's uh, ergonomics at home workstation, and there's some great um, tips there as well. We'll just briefly go over a couple. You know, you want to make sure that your screen is at your eye height. You would be great if your arms were supported. This is harder with like a laptop, but you can elevate that laptop. I always tell people to get a separate keyboard so they can um, so it can be um, ergonomically correct. Um, try not to be slouched on your couch, right? Doing this all the time. Um, try to make sure that your shoulders are back and your head is back as well. If we are constantly doing this motion with our chin forward, that puts a lot of strain on the neck um, and those upper traps. And that's where we get those tension headaches. So 90% of headaches are tension headaches, and that can be from the traps or the sternocleidomastoid process being, um, being tight. So just, you know, stretching out those traps are, uh, um, is really helpful. You can also look up a little bit that gets that front part um, as well. So if you start to feel like a little tension headache coming on, go ahead and take a little time to stretch out that neck. Um, and those traps as well. When those traps get really tight, that's when we get the knots, right? And what is a knot? A knot is when a muscle is being asked to fire over and over and over again. So if I'm constantly doing this, these muscles are trying to keep me upright, and so that's where we can get those knots, okay? Um, and that's where like the foam rollers, where you can roll it out, or there's so many different things out there that try to rub out those knots, but having good posture definitely helps, right? Um, so uh, when we're thinking about alignment, we want to think about making sure that we're strengthening and we're stretching both sides of the body. So a lot of times um, I'll have people come in and they're like, yeah, I like to do strength training. I do bench for my chest. I like to work out my abs and my quads. And I'm like, well, what about the backside of you? Oh, well, I don't look at that because that's what I see. We call it the mirror syndrome, okay? So if you're only working out one side of the body, that other side is not gonna get strong and then we're gonna end up collapsing in and then we have that muscle imbalance again, okay? Um, so making sure that you're strengthening and you're stretching out both sides, both sides of the body. If you're on the playground, what you don't hear is, oh, I pulled my ACL. Okay, you don't have a five-year-old saying, I just pulled my ACL or I just tore my meniscus, right? Because they don't have uh, muscle imbalances. They don't have overuse injuries or anything like that yet. Um, so that's why I'm such a, a firm believer that if we don't want to get injured, we got to make sure we take care of those joints. How do we take care of those joints? We work on mobility. We work on our flexibility. We try to strengthen both sides of the body. Okay. Um, all those things are, are definitely going to, definitely going to pay off. Um, so let's talk specifically just about shoulder injuries. Okay. Um, we want to make sure that we are not getting trappy, right? That everything is not coming from those upper traps. And we want to make sure we strengthen our mid back. If you're like, Hey, I don't go to the gym. I don't know how to strengthen my mid back. Um, I'm going to turn my video to the side. All right. And you can do starting, um, just with your hands on a wall, you're going to let your shoulder blades squeeze together. So your scapula is going to squeeze together and then you're going to round, squeeze together, round. When that starts to get a little bit easier, you can go down to the ground in a push-up position and on your knees is fine. Squeeze the shoulder blades and round. Okay. You can also use a band. So, and you can get these pretty cheap. You can either just stand here and squeeze the shoulder blades this way. You can also um, prop it on your foot as well, and you can pull it towards you, okay? But if you are doing that, don't shrug your shoulders up because there's those traps again that want to help out, okay? So you want to make sure you keep your elbows down, really trying to squeeze almost like that bottom part of the um, scapula or the shoulder blades, right? Um, so flexibility of the shoulder joint, having a good workstation is really important. Stretching out that chest, strengthening the mid back, all of those things hopefully will, will help decrease, um, injuries to that joint. So talking about low back pain. So you definitely want to make sure that you're lifting things properly. Turn my camera again. Okay. So if I'm going to pick something up, I'm not going to have my legs totally straight picking something up away from my body and then lifting it up. Okay. I want to have something close to my body, bending my knees, 
and keeping that object close. Um, and that can even be things from like when I'm, when I'm transferring stuff from the washer to the dryer, right? All those little things can definitely pay off. I want to think about pulling in with my abs as well. So that's one, good, one thing is to make sure that we have good posture when we're lifting something and knowing if something is too heavy to lift, just don't bother doing it, right? Um, we don't wanna end up hurting, hurting our back. Another thing about low back is what we don't, a lot of people don't know is that we wanna strengthen our glutes. So we want a strong bottom, okay? A strong glute muscle, because that's what keeps us upright as well. So having a strong glute is really important. Stretching out those abs and stretching out those hip flexors. So when we have back pain kind of off to the side in the QL, that can be from tight hip flexors. That's actually where it's inserted. So doing like a hip flexor stretch, which looks a lot like yoga warrior poses, right? Um, stretching out the hip, um, can actually relieve some of that low back pain as well. So strengthening the glutes, which I will show you, stretching out those abs, stretching out the hip flexors. Um, so once again, getting back to flexibility and mobility is really important. And then also strengthening, it's called the multifidi, which are the muscles along the spine. So they're one of the very few muscles in our body that with just regular motion and movement will not get stronger unless you do this one exercise. And this is called the bird dog. So you're on your hands and your knees, your shoulders are over the wrists, my abs are lifted, and I'm reaching out opposite arm, opposite leg. And I just hold that for a couple seconds Try not to tilt my pelvis, okay? So as I'm doing that, maybe I do it about 10 different, you know, 10 times, you know, a couple times a week would be great. And that will get um, the muscles along the spine nice and strong. The exercise I'm gonna show you to strengthen the glutes is the bridge. So you're gonna lay on your back, hands are by your side. You're squeezing your bottom as you lift your hips up towards the ceiling and you come back down. Of course, you could add weight on your hips as well. You do not want to feel this in your quads. You want to feel it in your glutes. If you feel it in your quads, you're probably quad dominant, right? So it means your quads tend to take over and nothing's happening in the backside, okay? We call that the no butt syndrome when people are kind of tucked under and they walk like this. So you want to make sure that you get those glutes to fire. So some people have to kind of have a little bit wider of a stance as they do that, that bridge. And then there's just some basic low back stretching you can do too. So one first thing in the morning, which feels really good, is you just pull a knee to your chest while you're in bed. Um, also, if you have low back pain when you wake up in the morning, try sleeping with a pillow in between your knees. Um, and sometimes that helps and keeps the hips in alignment as well. Um, you can also do low back stretching, which is just letting your knees fall to one side. You know, holding it for anywhere from 10 to 30 seconds or a minute if you have time. And then, of course, over to the other side as well. Okay. So when our muscles get tight, they're going to end up pulling on our joints, right? One way or another. So we want to make sure that we um, not only strengthen, but we stretch out our muscles as much as we can. So the takeaways from today's um, uh, Injury Prevention 101 a uh, lecture is take time for your stretching and your mobility. Um, be aware of what you do, uh, maybe repetition, um, so you don't get an overuse injury. Um, if you do have injuries, go see a PT, you know, a physical therapist. Let them um, help you. Um, and uh, the earlier you nip it in the butt, you know, hopefully um, the less chance it's going to turn into something that would need surgery or something like that. So um, have a great rest of your day.